Hey everyone, Nupkex here and welcome back to a special episode of uh, Heroes of the Storm. What we're going to be doing in this one, if we hit the pause button for just a second, we are going to be observing one of my ranked games, but, but as opposed to the Road to Grandmaster, which is always from my perspective, I didn't actually record this one. So we're going to be watching this from the enemy team's perspective. Let me show you why this is going to be cool. So uh, unfortunately this chat thing's in the way. But here's our team. You see I'm on the enemy team as the ETC. So you can watch just how terrifying it is to play against Snub Kex and how good he is. <coughs> Excuse me. Apart from that. But the thing that this is uh, really interesting is that if you look on the team we're going to be observing, we're going to be focusing on these two players right here because these are the Smurfs for Mene, who is the main range damage dealer for Team Dignitas, who just finished top four four in uh, BlizzCon in the Heroes Global Championship and then we're going to be looking at the Muradin who's being played by the Smurf of Smexy who is uh, the support for Team Fnatic who finished second in BlizzCon in the Heroes Global Championship so these two guys are duo queued up on their Smurfs and we bumped into them in a game so it's a little bit scary for sure a little bit scary for sure going up against these guys we'll see how we pull it off we take a quick look at the compositions, by the way. You can see uh, their team, they have uh, the Lost Vikings here on Garden of Terror. Then, very scary, actually, they have Muradin, who's pretty much the best tank with that. They have uh, Sylvanas as well, which is a really good combo with the Lost Vikings. You'll see why. They basically group up as four, while the Vikings take over all the lanes. So the Vikings get all the XP. Then you've got this four-man Sylvanas push down one of the lanes, which is really difficult to deal with. Li Ming fits really well, uh, too. Luckily, Rhaegar kind of sucks. We kind of lock them out of good support so that's good on our team we have uh kind of an odd team we've got myself in the etc which is pretty much the second best thing after murder um then they've got an oriel they've got someone was afk in the fountain that's why that's going on uh then we have a nova we've got vala and then the zebo so pretty unusual you can see they're getting a nice push here in fact let's zoom it out just a little bit and we have arrived getting stunned pretty much instantly Got a little bit of a stun and knockback onto the Muradin. I uh, see though our Vala player is only just arriving now. I think he was AFK. And there you go. We're starting to push in. So you guys really enjoyed uh, watching. You can see they've got a lot of damage down on these towers already. Already taken down one. Uh, you guys really enjoyed watching um, the pro game that we had. Well, sort of a game against a few of the pros that we had in our last episode. So I decided to bring you a few more. And that you quite enjoyed them. We also played one against Snitch, who is the sort of flex player for Team Dignitas. But he stomped our ass, so you're not going to get to see that one, unfortunately. You're not going to get to see that one. But there you go. Bit of an explosive start. In fact, if we throw in a quick pause here and talk about this start to the game. Bit of an explosive start. Obviously, we've taken a lot of structural damage. It's actually pretty good for us to trade two for two in that sort of situation. Because um, it, it stops this crazy push that they're going in, especially since we took out Sylvanas and the Murden, who are the big ones uh, enabling that push. So this buys us a little bit of time, a little bit of breathing room. And you can see they've got Vikings, by the way, in every single lane, so they're not missing any XP. Our Nazebo is up top, and he is getting all of that XP, so that's good. And when we respawn here, we're going to try to get back in. Now, once the night phase kicks in, this is going to get kind of a little bit extra scary because they will be obviously free to roam around and grab all the seeds and do all the big monsters with their four-man team um, while the Vikings continue to soak all the lanes. Luckily, their Viking player isn't fantastic, so he's, he's good. Actually, let me pause there and say what I mean by not fantastic, actually, as well, because that's quite important, too. We will be pausing a lot during this game, by the way. It is like a, a viewer... Uh, was it? It's like sort of a viewer replay coaching format, but it just happens to not be, you know, uh, a viewer replay. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Maybe they do watch me. Maybe that's where they learn everything. It's possible. It's unlikely, but possible, I suppose. But uh, yeah, um, so <clears throat> I thought it was kind of interesting uh, if we break down like MMOR and stuff like that, right? Because people were talking about in the in the last video, which you guys should definitely watch as well, where we're with the number one Grandmaster, gets a couple of pro players. Um, people were kind of like, oh my god, it's weird to hear people call like the, the Diamond players or the Master players like the weak links in this team. Uh, I think that's very important. They actually did a better job this season by making Grandmaster smaller and makes it more representative. But basically, if you're looking at MMOR, roughly speaking, um, I... I think you can break it down like in terms of like the top levels, like the masters sort of tier uh, within, uh, say, the hot slogs even more. You can break that down to sort of three uh, rough groups, and it's more useful because it does take a lot of games to grind up to your position on the ranked ladder. 
uh, but your MMOR is still the same. Uh, it's it's much more consistent. Um, so for example, for example, like in one of the games, I I ran into a guy that I would consider to be actually like grandmaster level, uh, a very good grandmaster level from season one, and then he would be grandmaster level. I would think this season, I ran into him in my first Diamond One promo game. <laughs> and he was in Diamond 2, and I just, like, face palmed. He's on the enemy team. I was like, oh, no, we're going up. They've ranked this. This guy's still ranked at Diamond 2. He's actually, like, a grandmaster level. This is going to be a horrible game, and it was a horrible game. He picked, like, a Kerrigan and wiped us out. But, um, so master, uh, master is sort of the rank. That begins around about 3,000 MMR, roughly speaking. It begins around 3,000 MMR. Uh, now, MMR goes up to about 4,200, but that's very much condensed um, into the, sort of the top players. Uh, I would consider Grandmaster, for me, not the, necessarily the rank, but the sort of the level of play begins at around 3,500, maybe a bit below that, which is sort of like the top 200 players in Europe right now. This is for Europe and this is for Season 2. The current stage of Season 2, obviously those values change uh, as the season goes on and MMR then gets shrunk when the season begins so uh, it, it, it varies depending on where you are in the season but currently this is roughly where it stands Master begins about 3k uh, MMR I say Grandmaster for me begins about 3.5k which is the top sort of 200 players in Europe and then what I consider like sort of the top 100 players or so will be about 3.7, 3.8k up to 4k and over 4k MMR so you can see that if you compare um like in the previous game, by the way, we had five players on our team. It had myself and the Samoro are about 3.5k. So it's sort of like the low end of Grandmaster MMR. Um, then we had um, Antihero and uh, Akira, who was like the number one Grandmaster at the time. I don't think he is anymore. Who would be about 3.7k to 4k. Antihero actually being higher. And then we had Brightwing, who was only 3k. So we had sort of like two low-level Grandmasters, two sort of high-level Grandmasters, and then a Master player. And I think you could see that within the game, that the Brightwing was probably the worst. Uh, people were saying, you know, Nopkex, you play pretty well. I think I did. But at the same time, you could see that I was inexperienced playing against like these higher players. Like I've been mostly playing against these sort of 3k players, 3.5k players, some of them. Uh, as well in my sort of the ranking up game. So I was inexperienced playing against sort of the higher level players. Obviously on the enemy team, we had the three pro players who were about, you know, in, in the sort of the top uh, bracket. And then they had like two sort of like 3K players. And I think that kind of showed in that game, if you're looking at it and breaking it down. In this game, it's it's interesting. Obviously Mene and Smexy are top tier grandmasters. They're looking at that sort of 3.7 to 4K. I think these Smurfs are about 3.7. I think they're really ones are 4K plus. Um, and you've got, I think the rest of their team are sort of like the master level. Um, then on our team, you had the Nova is the highest and yeah, so on and so forth. The rest are kind of master level. So this is a, like a lower level game than the last one for sure. And I think that will show. That's why I didn't initially think I would bring this one to you. It's still a good game, but it's not as good. And you can see this interesting first night phase. We're obviously in here trying to take this camp. Valid getting some good poke onto the Sylvanas being kind of aggressive. Back of that Li Ming damage. Oriel is coming up here. And we team trying to collapse on him. Good engage by Smexy. The power slide out. I'm trying to block some of the skill shots here on the ETC. And this is a pretty tough retreat. I think their team could have looked at actually going more aggressive in that sort of situation than they actually did. Like going in a little bit earlier and trying to take that siege camp aggressively. That's really what you want to do when you've got a four-man team and they're, they're, they've got less. So if we look at the seeds, our team is actually ahead, which is not ideal by any means for their team. Getting some decent damage down here on them, body blocking them in, but I am dying, so I'm backing away. Work by Mane, he's very accurate with his skill shots, I say, as he misses one, just barely. He's certainly pretty accurate. I mean, here, blinking in aggressively, and there you go. Not able to sidestep that with the Viking damage coming in as well, and we go down. Rip nub kicks, what a noob. And here they go, they're coming up here. I'm looking to start getting one of these. They're actually looking to gank the uh, the Nazebo, who's gone a little bit too far forwards. They don't have enough damage to kill him. In fact, the Rhaegar is just going to get himself killed because the Nova was there. That's not good for them. Not good at all. In the meantime, Mane has to run down to the bottom because Vala is pushing in really hard. And uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good for us. Sylvan is almost going down up top as well. And here we go. I think you can see that the sort of the pace of this game has been very much dictated by the MMR ranges of the team. 
by the matchmaking, the fact that you've got these two very good players and then three weaker players relative to what we're expecting. And that the weaker players have made a few mistakes or losing a lot of HP, which is making things difficult. Mike is damped out a stun from the Oriole, but it doesn't hit. Now they're looking to invade aggressively here. Now, of course, we're going to be able to walk away to our ETC. Zebo keeping up some pressure. Fala and Li Ming kind of going toe to toe down bottom. And the Vikings are rotating up. A big fight has broken out up here. Rhaegar once again going extremely low. I think this is actually a dead Rhaegar from the looks of things. Yeah, Rhaegar actually going down. Bit of an unnecessary power slide by me. It didn't matter too much because over here there's not too much threat going in until Mane arrives. And indeed, Mane has arrived. And Sylvanas is back again now. It's actually going very low though. I was hoping to stun the Sylvanas, but she does get unstoppable from activating her haunting wave. And she's able to get out. And there you go. Nice aim by Mane onto me. And Savannah gets actually a nice little punish as we try to clear out this siege minion wave. Vala still down bottom, still putting on a lot of pressure, and the Vikings not really being able to handle it. Uh, and the four-man team, ooh, ouch, that's a bad loss. The four-man team with the enemy uh, of the blue team falling apart just that little bit. Let's check out Mane down here. That was pretty nice. You could see that Mane was coming in. Uh, and then Fala, instead of running away and just dying, she actually turned around and just suicided into the Sylvanas. Got her pretty low, actually. So just getting as much value as she could out of that death. That's pretty good play right there. Once again, the Rhaegar being a little bit out of position. We're trying to punish. Sylvanas to get picked off by Nova, it looks like. So Mane is once again kind of brought back to the bottom lane. What you really want to do when you're playing with the Vikings team is you want to be able to rotate as four. You want the Vikings to be able to control the bottom lane. Obviously, you have to move heroes around as needs dictate uh, in order to counter pushes by the enemy team. Um, and then you also want to be trying to get Merc camps and letting them push in with the Vikings as well. Once again, this Rhaegar getting caught out by the Nazebo. Nazebo is wrecking Rhaegar's face in this game, and that's actually pretty huge for us. We are starting to get this, and a large seed advantage now for our team. Which, I mean, if we pause it here, like, there's so much things that the enemy team could be, be doing right here. The Rhaegar and Savannah are duo queue, by the way. Uh, these two are duo queue, and these two guys, obviously, are duo queue. There's so much that the Sylvanas could be leading in terms of the team. Like, they could literally just run bottom lane and just push as four-man if they needed to. Obviously, they want to try to get the seeds, but they could do a big, strong four-man push and draw us away because they've got Sylvanas and they can make this happen. Let's actually take a quick look at the talents before we go any further and just absorb the first three tiers of talents before we move on to the heroic ones. So in terms of, uh, let's look at Mene and uh, Smexi first. They've gone, yeah, pretty damn standard, pretty good choices of force armor to protect from Nova, mostly. Uh, you know, Nova could just jump out and assassinate the Li Ming, so the force armor is protecting her from that. You'd love to get, um, you would love to get the other one, the uh, Power Hungry, which gives you more mana and ability power from regen globes. So strong in this map, but Force Armor is just probably necessary against a Stealthed Hero that can get on top of you and burst you. She also picked up Dominance for, excuse me, for a similar reason. They're also, we're also like a very squishy, very ranged team, so Dominance should work pretty well. Uh, should be easy to get kills, in theory, and therefore get resets on the health and be able to dive more aggressively. And then Calamity, which is pretty standard, gives you wave clear, gives you, yeah, just more damage, and it's pretty fantastic. So actually it's block. Uh, obviously we're going against Nova, who has got one in the chamber. Uh, we'll nearly always pick that, because it's the best one. We've got Vala as well, who hits pretty hard, so block makes a lot of sense. Um, Thunder Burn then. So again, two charges of Thunder, well, the Charger Clap explodes a second time, gives you zone control. Uh, gives you good synergy with healing static at 13, then Iron Forge Momentum, uh, reducing the cooldown of your Q and your W per hit. So dead standard for Murden pretty much. But yeah, you can see we've got Bribe, um, Merc Lord on the Vikings, which is again pretty standard. Sylvanas has gone for Withering Barrage, huh? Okay, I don't like that one, but oh well. And then Wolf Run, Healing Totem Cleanse. Relatively standard stuff. Over on our team, we have a Q build coming out from Oriel plus uh, Energized Cord. All right, pretty cool. Uh, Nova's got pretty much dead standard stuff right here. Vala's got an interesting one. She's gone into a Q bill, but didn't get Q at level 1. I probably would have taken Q at level 1 to burst these things down faster. But Hot Pursuit isn't terrible by any means either. If they're more mana re uh, sustain and uh, hatred, I would say that the mana regen you're getting 
No, I actually think I actually do think that if you've got these two, I think the Q thing at level one is just better because of the the damage against neutral objectives like mercenaries and uh, the garden terrors. I think would be just better, honestly. Uh, it also saves you forty mana per Q. So I mean, if you fire off two Qs using repeating arrow, you've just saved yourself eighty mana, which is the equivalent of twenty seconds. Um, and you're doing that like every time Vault refreshes, which is what. It's 10 second cooldown. So like every 10 seconds, you're saving yourself 20 seconds worth of mana from that at 10 hatred. So I think it's just worth it to take the Q thing at level one. And the utility, you're getting move speed from this basically is you get 10% extra move speed at max hatred, which is nice. Um, but I don't think it's necessary. I think the, the value of Q is a bit better. nazebo has gone a full spider build. You can see I've gone for prog rock here. So regen close makes our guitar solo heal us more. So more healing because uh, we have uh, we have an Oriole. So that will help her out with the healing a little bit. And we'll do some AOE healing too. So kind of nice speed metal and echo pedal. So pretty standard stuff really all things considered. Check out the stats so far. You can see Nazebo has done a lot of damage. Mostly to... Uh, <laughs> Fala went down actually. Mostly to <laughs> freaking Rhaegar. Uh, and Mene then leading the damage on the enemy team. Nice aggression in on top right there. We're zoning them out, so I'm actually, actually going down. We got a really good power slide and rotation around. They were looking for a pick and they didn't get it. Wasn't a bad attempt by them, but they did get taken out. We're going to take a look at the heroics next. We're about to hit level 10 and we'll wait until our team takes the heroics. In fact, we can probably do it live, seeing as there's not too much happening with Muradin being dead. Viking died. I think. Up top, there's another one gonna die as well, looks like. Yeah, dead Viking. Dead Viking. These guys are lurking in the brush, waiting to ambush us here. Oh, this is actually kind of important, right? If we hit the pause button, and bear in mind this rotation as well, and the death timers, and the fact that the Zipo is top, and that we're doing this, and the Vikings are arriving. Um, but yeah, we were talking here about who would take the terror. So if you look at our team, who's the best one to take the terror? I was saying, well, Nazebo probably is the best one to take the terror. It's just useful to have Nova for the burst kill potential. Fala is the most flexible range damage dealer. Then it's just good to have me there as an extra body zoning because we are such a, a range squishy team with these four heroes. It's just good to have ETC there for zoning, for CC, uh, and for a tankier body up the front. Um, Nazebo, seeing as we got three range damage dealers, we can really lose one range damage dealer and it doesn't hurt our composition very much. I think Nazebo is the one that makes the most sense uh, to take that. He's also been split pushing a lot and he can just continue his split push uh, just inside a terror and that will work pretty well. We take a look at the heroics here as well. We've got Wave of Force from Li Ming, which is really interesting. I much prefer Disintegrate myself, but I did investigate Mene's profile and he always takes Wave of Force and the dude is like a 75% win rate on Li Ming on this profile. Uh, in the top 100 players in EU. Uh, it's probably better. I don't, I don't know exactly. I didn't look at his main profile, but on this one, anyway, he's, he's, it works really well for him, and he is probably the best mage player in Europe, so I would tend to take what he does, you know, pretty seriously as a, as a pretty good way of doing things. Uh, you give up a lot of damage for this, but you get control. It's also going to be useful against, you know, Nova, uh, Oriel, Nazebo, who are all extremely low mobility heroes. Um, to knock them into his team and secure a kill to just disrupt us and the lack of mobility that we have. And also it will cancel Mosh Pit. And that's actually going to be one of the difficult things in this game for me is that they've got, you know, Wailing Arrow. They've got Qs on low cooldown for Muradin. They've got Wave of Force. Um, they have quite a lot of ways to interrupt Mosh Pit. So you'll see, you'll notice that with my play, I did pick up Mosh Pit instead of Stage Dive. I just felt it would be more useful. Um, we're just going to be using this fairly... We really screw it up, I think. We really screw it up. We're going to be using this fairly aggressively. Um, not looking for a good mosh pit, just looking for a decent mosh pit. Um, even just to get one hero, just to pick off one hero will be worthwhile. Uh, or just to absorb some of these heroics. Like, if we if we simply remove Wailing Arrow by using mosh pit, then that's a huge win, in my opinion. Um so yeah, there you go. Uh, Avatar, pretty standard. Play again from the Vikings, pretty standard. Wailing Arrow, Ancestral, so dead standard stuff all here. Crystal Aegis. Mosh Pit against Stage Dive is really good, but I I do think that in this case I wanted the Mosh Pit just to, to yeah, just bait out some stuff from the enemy team, make it a bit more worthwhile, and maybe get a pick or two for very lucky. Uh, that's why Stage Dive is picked so often. It gives you Split Push with the Echo Pedal, which is really nice, and gives you good engage and everything. And also the fact that a mosh pit can be countered very easily. Uh, for example, Wave of Force really counters Mosh Pit, so it can be almost impossible to get a good one off. But anyway, Precision Strike, pretty standard. Strafe, 
and gargantuan. So there you go. There's the heroics. I think this is very important. Like, did you see that? Did you guys notice that? As soon as you could see that we had just it, we had it timed out in our head. As soon as we saw like the Vikings arrive, and then we knew death timers. Okay, these guys are going to be arriving. Just good game sense, right? Just good game sense, and the fact that Nazebo wasn't there. As soon as the enemy team arrives, we just back away. Just back away. Wailing Arrow actually coming out, and it's not a very good one. So they use the Wailing Arrow for really nothing. You can see there actually, this is kind of important. Nazebo was saying like, go back, go back, go back. I was saying, look, I was actually just trying to stall them out right there. And it's really nice that we got the Wailing Arrow. Uh, basically, I was not looking to engage. This is what was going through my head was I was just posturing in here. I knew that I had power slide ready, so I could just power slide out. Basically, he was just trying to stall the enemy team. You can see while they were down there attacking us, they're now rotating up. But the terrors already kind of got in position and started to do some work in the siege camp as well. Just literally trying to waste their time. Mayonnaise come down here to try to deal with this siege camp. We're looking for a kill on him. This is best mosh pity you. <laughs> if you turn around and try to cast some spells, we might have hit it. You can see I'm saying blah. Obviously, you see our team's chat instead of their team's chat because it was my replay. I think it's a Viking. Yeah, Viking going very low. Terra getting some work done. We have arrived now. Smexy gets cleansed and Dwarf tosses out. Um, one fort goes down. Uh, not the best terror, but also not the worst terror. Not the best, not the worst. We'll take it. Savannah's almost going down as well. She just get out with her dash. Nice. Uh, ooh, that actually baited out the Ancestral. That Precision Strike actually baited out Ancestral on the Savannah. She didn't need it to survive. She actually got hit by Ancestral afterwards, which is why she's at full health. And we got a big fight erupting over here. Oriel does go down. This is a very nice fight for the blue team. Nazebo is up top. We're completely split. You can see I'm just gone to the left. I'm going to die. There's no question about it. But basically, trying to draw people away so that Nova could run away. So Nova went this way. I went this way. We baited away a couple of the enemy team members. Not exactly baited, but, you know, they had to invest a couple to secure the kill on me. And that let Nova run away. Nova escaped, so he's making the most of that. Nazebo getting a pretty solid push up top in the meantime. And the Vikings starting to push out down bottom. And the enemy team is starting to grab some of their mercs, which are going to be pushing in with Merc Lord, and that's a pretty big deal for them. That will start making things uh, much more useful. You can see the Nova is hunting out the Vikings. Very effective, very dangerous for her. And you can see that uh, Mane and Smexy are setting up for a potential kill on the Nova. The fort is very low as well. They see her backing away though, so they just step back into a brush. And they're setting up a trap here. They know that we're nearby. Nova bribed that camp away with her level 4 talent, Covert Ops. And Rhaegar is arriving now as well. You see, I'm in the middle. They're probably hoping to catch me in a rotation down to bottom to go push this in. And a Viking is pushing in with some Merc camps here as well. No one has appeared, so they give up and they back away. Begin to clear out the siege camp. It's a really interesting play from them. You know, waiting aggressively on the enemy side of the map, looking for a pick, expecting a, a bad rotation from either Nova or from me to maybe happen and take them out. Sorry, I missed that down there. Basically, what happened was the Nova actually did go aggressively on Mene. We could hear the sound of his health going low. Uh, Rhaegar was there, though. The whole team was there. They just turned around and killed the Nova. So that's good for them. We picked up the Viking in middle. And there's Viking trying to defend up top against the, the Bruiser camp that we took. And blue team is now making a good move. This is what I was talking about earlier. With the pressure they can bring by sending in... Um, Vala actually goes deep to try to pick up Sylvanas, and look at that, they're waiting once again in the brush, dive in on top of her and blow her up. That's twice that they've caught people out, just by waiting back and going for something like that. Our Nova starts flaming the team, because we went for camps and stuff instead of coming back. Uh, you know, I think you know Nova and Vala both got a bit greedy and got very much outplayed by really nice ganks down bottom, which is what made this so powerful. So it's not entirely our team's fault, I think, in committing to the camp. I think we probably should have retreated a bit sooner. See, we're starting to take the seeds here. Blue team gets one of their uh, terrors, which is good for them. Another power play for a team with Vikings is when they've got one Viking in the terror and the other two are soaking. See, our team attempting to escape them out as they burn down this terror down here. So that's a bunch of seeds for them. Siege camp pushing in middle. 
bottom quite vulnerable. And the Viking actually grabs the terror. I think they would have been better starting off the siege camp before picking up that terror and having a siege camp pushing in middle as well while the terror pushes down bottom onto a keep. We have got, we're going to have to basically d dedicate all of our resources down here. See, we actually picked up the top terror. So it's very awkward for the team. Nova getting focused down. Oriel in with a save and does manage to save her. Rhaegar overextending and going down himself. Savannah's only arriving now. Wailing Arrow not off cooldown. Smexy therefore caught out of position. He goes down. And many having to back off. So clearly just a bad position. Bad play by the enemy team. Rhaegar specifically going in aggressively first. Dying with Ancestral on cooldown. Savannah's arriving late. And no Wailing Arrow for that fight. Uh, and then things just kind of went to shit. They almost killed a Nova, which is why they got baited in, but Oriel nicely played with the Crystal Aegis and then a heal following up. Basically completely saved her. We're down here, by the way. Did Hearthstone back after that fight. And finish off the tear. Managed to just about save the keep, though. It was a very close thing. Good work by the enemy team picking off a fort in the meantime. Exploiting that sort of split uh, map pressure that they can create. There's Nova. And yeah, there you go. At this stage, they want to... It's probably going to bribe these, yeah. Interesting. But yeah, they want to keep creating this pressure with mercenaries. One minute on that one. Our team picks up this pair. So they haven't done the best job. They haven't been able to do the best job with mercenaries, right? They haven't been able to steal any of ours, for example. Bit of fight going on in mid lane. Smexy being caught out of position, but of course he's murdered and just dwarf tosses away. Pushing in, looking for a pick with a parasite. Don't get it, takes some free damage in return. Safan is actually haunting waves into the team and gets just exploded instantly. I was like, thank you very much for that. We will take that. No complaints. I'm not sure what happened there. Just a misclick from Sylvanas, but that's a huge mistake. This late in the game, it's a huge mistake. And that push, as you can see, we're just pushing in on their keep wall now. Very little fear. Nova calling after to go back. You can see Vala is up top, clearing out the sea champ and killing a Viking. Nova's down bottom, also killing a Viking. Okay, not quite killing a Viking, but trying to kill a Viking. And our team in middle does back away. Nazebo though gets caught out. Wave of Force pushing him back in as well. Good uh, wall of zombies helps zoning him out. We uh, power slide in and Mede actually goes down within the damage. Focus in there. Once again, Rhaegar is there, but no heals coming out from him. A very unusual, <laughs> very unusual Crystal Aegis from the Oriel actually stops us from chasing Rhaegar. When Fala arrives, we don't quite land the powers like of that. I don't know what that was. That Crystal Aegis. Definitely a few misplays in this game for sure. I screwed up one mosh pit pretty spectacularly. That was a, a really weird Crystal Aegis. The Sylvanas haunting wave in. Uh, which I mean like Rhaegar. Mene dying up there was not Mene's fault I would say. I think that's very much Rhaegar's fault. And this keep is going down. Someone's backing off right there. We are going on to core. Nazebo. Nazebo is back right now, though. Focus fire on the Murd, and he actually gets vulnerable from the Nova, and he goes down. Bala popping strafe, doing a lot of damage to the Vikings, knocking them back. Many nice aim on the magic missiles. You can see that. Very good aim. He's actually got, I think, fireflies. And there you go. The keep goes down. That is GG. Let's check out the stats and stuff before we go any further. And let's check out the let's check out the stats, and then we can check out the talents after that. So you can see Vala did a whole ton of damage, whole ton of damage. Nova did quite a lot as well. So did Nazebo. Everyone did pretty good. Everyone did pretty good. Team feeder joint with Vala for me. Hooray! 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 Over on the enemy team, you can see more deaths overall, and their damage was certainly lower. Um, I think a, a huge issue for them was that just. Uh, yeah, you could see. I think it was really interesting, this game. I think it was really interesting because you could see that there was a, such a large discrepancy within the MMR. Again, that's about a thousand MMR in difference between Smexy and Mene and between the other three members of their team. That's huge. Like, you really can't overstate, even though they're they're all close in terms of the rankings. Like, I think they're all, like, master players at the moment, uh, except for Mene and Smexy being grandmasters. But like that sounds closer than it actually is when you actually look at the, the MMOR and the skill levels. 
And I think you could see that coming through in the play that these three guys were definitely much weaker than these two and that they were trying to make stuff happen and they couldn't really do it. I think they were also respecting us a bit too much, expecting us to be better, our team to be better than it was, when in fact our team is, in theory, balanced out against theirs pretty well. Uh, we check out the talents then as well. Uh, the final sort of talents coming in. You have an Earth Shield from Rhaegar, uh, just to help Muradin stay alive, I guess. Hunger of the Wolf. Um, I, I, uh, I don't know, I think that's a pretty bad idea. <laughs> I think that, that didn't work very well. Um, we got Windrunner and Cold Embrace. I think they're pretty standard from Sylvanas and work very nicely. I would really like to see Lost. I if you're picking up Cold Embrace, I really do think Lost Soul level four is, is such a strong talent because it lets you get that off so much more often. Uh, jump and Le uh, Large and In Charge, pretty standard from the Vikings as well. Uh, healing Static and Heavy Impact, fairly standard from the Muradin too. And Illusionist and Firefly. So very interesting you went for the Fireflies on Li Ming. There you go. Illusionist, very standard. Firefly is more unusual. Reducing the mana cost, increasing the speed, and reducing the cooldown. Very interesting. Just helping him to land those more consistently in all of these targets. Um, yeah, I've seen a few people start to use Fireflies a bit more, so very interested by that. Very interested by the way the Force and Fireflies build for Mene. But again, you know, if you're going to look to anyone for build advice, I think Mene is the dude to do it for, for mages. Uh, for Oriel, she has the Converging Force. That's weird. Don't often see that one. It's kind of interesting, he went for the Q build. That's the thing I thought, actually, now I'm thinking about it, is that he went for a Q build. Normally you go for the Q build to get the blind at level 13, which synergizes with the bigger radius and the faster cast speed to, like, blind priority targets. They don't have anyone worth blinding, though. <laughs> so it's kind of unusual. I wouldn't... Uh, it's not a terrible build, but I wouldn't be huge on him. And then the attack speed, that's pretty nice. They probably put it on Vala. The crown is probably on Vala for most of the game, who does generate, excuse me, I just kicked my microphone stand, does generate this consistent uh, healing output because uh, of her consistent damage. And then, you know, her basic attacks do work. Yeah, Manticore, that's a pretty nice combo. Pretty nice combo. Uh, for ETC, I got face mount, so slowing enemies as well. And then I went actually for aggressive shredding at level 16. And the reason I went for this is because I finished guitar at uh, Prague Rock so early on in the game. So, uh, yeah, just give me a lot of self-sustain during these fights, a ton of self-sustain, and also be pulsing some AoE heals. I just thought that would be a really nice little combo in this game uh, to go for. I don't think there's anything else at 16 that Sede, to me, is worthwhile against this team. For example, you could get one that makes Power Slide give you resistant, but I didn't feel like I was actually dying very much. Um, so, yeah, it was fine. Nova went for a W built. Dead standard stuff from Nova. Bala getting the Q for heals to synergize with these two talents. Very nice. And then Manticore, actually quite intriguing just to help take down that Murad and that little bit faster. Um, that's just the, it, it, without the other W talents, without, especially the level 7 one, reducing the cooldown of W and then improving its damage at level 4. Uh, Frost Shots is not as good at 16. It's still a pretty good standalone talent just for the utility of the range and the slow. But... Uh, with the Q build, I think Manticore is pretty good as well. And yeah, Synergize nicely at Will of Heaven, actually. And then Superstition. Oh, that's actually beautiful for the Zebo. That really helped us, because they, they really have so little right-click damage, like Sylvanas. And yeah, they're they're very focused on their, their magic damage. So Superstition, 50% less damage from abilities, really helped him be very tanky. Very, very tanky. Nice pick there. And Spider Colony then, uh, just more. This is a full Q build. It worked out very very well so there you guys go in fact we can check out some of the other stuff the APM is kind of interesting wow that doesn't really I can see the average APM of all the players kind of interesting doesn't obviously it doesn't really matter too much on the current APM Lost Vikings going up to 400 and something there pretty pretty low overall it was a pretty uh it was a very one-sided game so that's part of it XP totals overall you can see the, the Vikings did okay but not that great considering Nazebo was doing a similar sort of thing for us they should be more ahead than they actually were I think carried objectives kills deaths and assists and uh, we got two kills oh huh? yay for us that's the thing people always love looking at the kills the kill stats and stuff I, I never look at this I never look at this it doesn't to me it doesn't matter in fact when they when they split kills and assists, when they, they used to just have takedowns, and then they split into kills and assists. I never liked that change. I don't like it in this game. I think it should just have... Um, I see the CC is pretty intriguing here, right? Time CC'd enemy. You see, ours is kind of low. Nova's got a lot from all of her W charges. She's got more than we have with our Q stun. And then Muradin with his Q stun, and with 
especially with the W slow from Thunderclap. He's got a ton of CC on the enemy. Even Rhaegar with the slow totem has got a lot more than we have. It got very low CC, kind of intriguing. And uh, there you go. That's all the stats, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. Pretty interesting game. Like I said, it was pretty one-sided, which is why I didn't bring this to you before. Uh, but I thought it was kind of interesting to break it down as if you were a replay type thing. Look at these like sort of pro players, see how they do. A little bit of a bugged out uh, viewer interface right there. Observer interface thingy. Um, and uh, yeah, red team wins. I believe the Zevo got MVP. If I remember correctly. Yes, he did. I think he, uh, I think he did deserve it. I think he did deserve it. I think Nazebo played really, really well. Um, you know, he had great split push. It ended up being a very good pick into their team as well. I uh, he did great split push, got great XP, totally owned the Rhaegar. And there you go, I thought it was pretty interesting to break it down and show you guys and give you a bit of a, an insight as well into the differences, a very visible insight into the differences between like master players and then the top level of Grandmasters. You can see that very much, very, 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 very much uh, within the enemy team. Um, and uh, yeah, even like two pro players do a queuing. Uh, when I saw him, I was like, uh-oh, this is going to be a really tough game. In fact, it ended up being uh, pretty one-sided and pretty even for us. Um, that's just, that's the way the cookie crumbles. They had a good composition. Well, Rhaegar is, not, is a pretty weak hero, honestly. But we locked them out of supports in the draft. Um, out of the good supports in the draft. So they were in a bit of a tough situation there. Rhaegar was like the best one left. And he's not that great at the moment. And that definitely helped us. But apart from that... So you could see that the cost of giving them Rhaegar meant that they had, like, Savannah's Lost Vikings, Muradin, Li Ming, which is really good. The rest of their heroes were such a good comp. Then the Rhaegar is a bit weaker. Um, and, uh, yeah, I thought it was an interesting game. Uh, beating the Lost Vikings, beating a couple of pro players. And I thought it'd be kind of fun as well to see what it's like, or, like, what my play is like when you see it from the respective of an enemy team. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up if you did. I'll see you all next time for more Heroes of the Storm. Bye-bye.